By 2050, the world population is expected to grow to 9 billion. How are farmers going to feed in such an increase of hungry mouths with a steady decrease of arable land? Luckily, due to new sustainable agricultural practices, food production has increased 250 to 300 percent since 1960. I grew up with an agriculture background and have been in the pursuit of an agriculture degree, so I've taken close notice of the changes in agriculture and have seen the results of sustainable just within my lifetime. Sustainable agriculture comes in many forms, small and large. Each practice is working together to create food solutions for generations ahead. Without new and improved methods of farming, it could be your mouth that goes hungry today. So what is sustainable agriculture? According to Gail Feenstra at the University of California, the goal is to protect the environment, public health, and economic profitability. The environment and profitability go hand in hand. To farmers, their profit comes from their natural resources. If they can reuse, reduce, or recycle any of their naturally free resources, they will not have to buy from other companies, thus in turn improving public health. If farmers know what needs to be fixed, they must also know how to fix it. Practices vary from farm to farm, and each operation has its own specific goals, but the main idea is evident in each effort. The most common and profitable practice is cultural control. Farmers and ranchers alike use this method in IPM, or Integrated Pest Management. John R. Myers gives examples in his article of cultural controls like propagation, intercropping, and water management flooding. These confuse and in return decrease pests, decreasing pesticides. Genetically modified organisms can also be used to fight pests and chemicals with altered DNA. For animal producers, graze management can also be observed to preserve pastures and grassland. Feenstra states that proper grass management may even allow for the removal of all irrigation. Change is hard, but sustainability has its advantages over traditional methods. Now that we understand what sustainable agriculture is, we need to understand what it isn't. I love my chicken nuggets, but Tyson's Chicken House are not quite what sustainable agriculturalists are looking for. Mass productions of a single crop or product can require mass amounts of single resources that is not feasibly accessible to farmers, forcing him or her to buy another company's product. These practices and businesses are needed and have a place in today's economy, but are the complete counter of what sustainable agriculture stands for. Joe Salatin, owner of Polyface Farms Incorporated, is the epitome of sustainable agriculture with his multi-operational farm. His cow's feedlot is a big manure pile that soon after becomes the pig's home. The pig's root in the manure, making the fertilizer aerobic again after the cows have compressed it with their hooks. Joe Salton says he takes advantage of the pig's pigginess by letting the pigs work for him. The cattle are all grass-fed, eliminating grain costs. His fowl production includes free-range broilers, layers, and turkeys, which follow the cattle in the field, eating the bugs from their cow manure, while also fertilizing the field as they go. Joe goes against the free production grain to show the capability of sustainable agriculture. The entire world is being forced to become more sustainable. Even large businesses are becoming multifunctional. Knowing where your food comes from is also crucial to consumer safety. Next time you sit down to eat, look at your food and try to imagine how it got to your plate.